What is a Roth IRA? So we're talking about what's better, a 401k or a Roth IRA. So what is a Roth IRA? A Roth IRA is a special IRA where you pay taxes on the money before you contribute it to the Roth IRA. All the money that you put into a Roth IRA is tax free and the growth on that money is tax free as well. Now there are income limits and contribution limits when it comes to a Roth IRA. So if you make over a certain amount of money, if your modified adjusted gross income is over a certain threshold, then you are not allowed to put money into a Roth IRA. Just do a simple Google search what year you are watching this video and income limits for Roth IRA and you will find how much money is the maximum amount you can make if you want to contribute to a Roth IRA. This applies to single individual filers, married filing jointly, married filing head of household, and separated. So you want to understand what are the income limits and the contribution limits. A Roth IRA maxes out the amount of money that you can put into it every year. Now a 401k allows for much more contribution than a Roth IRA. Normally the Roth IRAs are somewhere between six and seven thousand dollars and they do allow for a catch-up contribution. Now inside of a Roth IRA there's a variety of investment options. You can invest in mutual funds, you can invest in stocks, bonds, ETFs, crypto, annuities, CDs, money market funds. You can invest in anything that you want inside of a Roth IRA. There's no limitations to the type of investments that you can have inside of a Roth IRA. You can have a Roth CD at your bank and you can have a Roth IRA at TD Ameritrade where you're buying Facebook stock and Google stock or whatever else you want to buy. So a Roth IRA has the flexibility to invest in anything that you want. And a Roth IRA is open normally at an investment firm like a Vanguard, a TD Ameritrade, a Fidelity, or like I said, maybe at your bank. All right, let's go through how a Roth IRA conversion strategy would work for you and how you can implement this into your retirement planning process. Keep in mind, you need to work with a tax accountant, a CPA, or a financial advisor when you implement this to make sure that you're not paying too much in taxes. So let's look at an example on the board and I wanna go through this and show you how it works. And we're gonna use a bucket of money, $250,000. Now keep in mind, for this strategy, it's only a portion of the client's assets. They've got other assets and other places. This is just $250,000 and they're asking the question, can I retire at 55? So we're gonna create a bridge of money from 55 to 60 that is tax free, okay? Now, we've got, we're age 50 and between ages 50 and 54, we're still working. Okay, and we're doing a Roth conversion. So from age 50, 51, 52, 53, and 54, we're gonna do a $50,000 IRA to Roth IRA conversion. So this $50,000 is gonna be considered taxable income. No penalty, but taxable income. And keep in mind, when you do a conversion from an IRA to a Roth IRA, there are no income limits. So if you make $400,000 or if you make $50,000, you can do a IRA to Roth IRA conversion. The income limits only apply to a contribution to a Roth IRA. So for five years from 50 to 54, we're doing a $50,000 Roth IRA conversion. Now we're gonna start taking a withdrawal of this money at 55 and we're gonna take $50,000. So at age 55, we can take 50,000 from the first bucket, right? Our source is age 50, right up here. At 56, we're gonna take another $50,000. Our source is age 51 conversion. 
and so on and so forth. So essentially, we've put in $250,000 from our IRA to Roth IRA conversion, and now we've taken out $250,000 in tax-free retirement income. Now, a little caveat, think about inflation. So this money down here, it's got to have some inflation protection on it. Now, this money's still invested in the market or it's invested in some kind of retirement vehicle. I prefer safety when we're doing a Roth IRA conversion ladder. And the reason I prefer safe investments or safety vehicles is because if we convert $50,000 that we're going to want for income in five years, I want to make sure that $50,000 is there. So maybe it only grows at two, three, or 4%. That's better than it growing at eight and nine percent with roller coaster velocity, and we don't know what it's actually going to be at when we need the retirement income. So think about inflation when you're taking out this money. You might want to consider having a cash bucket somewhere else that you can pull from to help make up for inflation. If we're just doing essential fifty thousand, we want to think about inflation. But here's how you do it: five years of conversions and five years of income. Remember, the first conversion is the first bucket we're taking for retirement income because it has satisfied the five-year rule, okay? So this is a great strategy for you to use if you're trying to bridge the gap from one income source to another. Maybe you're retiring at 55. Can I retire at 55? And you wanna bridge the gap to 62, Social Security. Well, you could do this over a seven-year period and have seven years of tax-free income until you get to Social Security. Maybe you've got a pension that starts at 60 or 65. It doesn't have to be a five-year uh, Roth IRA conversion strategy. You could do it for a 10, 15-year. You can look, do this in many different forms, which is why we do an EKG for clients to make sure they're gonna get to retirement, they're gonna get through retirement, and we wanna protect their ability to stay in retirement, especially if we're doing intricate Roth IRA conversion strategies. Hey, thank you so much for watching today. God bless, bye-bye. So what is a Roth IRA conversion? Well, in simple terms, a Roth IRA conversion is moving money from your IRA into your Roth IRA or moving money from your SEP retirement account into your Roth IRA or moving money from an old 401k into a Roth IRA or moving money from a simple IRA into your Roth IRA. You're taking money that is pre-tax, meaning that taxes have not been paid on those retirement funds yet, and you're moving it into a tax-free account. But in the interim, between the IRA and the Roth IRA, taxes need to be paid. So when you move money out of your IRA, you pay the taxes now, and you get tax-free growth in your Roth IRA. Isn't that great? Now, keep in mind, depending on what your income is, you might do some bracket jumping if you're doing Roth IRA conversions. Drew, what is bracket jumping when it comes to a Roth IRA conversion? Let me give you a good example. Let's say you make $80,000 a year, okay? You're in the 22% federal income tax bracket. But let's say you convert $10,000 from your IRA to your Roth IRA. Well, that $10,000 is considered taxable income in the year that you do the conversion. So you have your $80,000 salary, your $10,000 conversion, you add those together, that's $90,000 in income. You know what bracket you're in now? You're in the 24% bracket. So you want to be careful that you're, you're not doing bracket jumping when you do your Roth IRA conversions. Now, a great thing about a Roth IRA conversion is there's no conversion and there's no income limit. With a Roth IRA, there are income limits and there's contribution limits when you're putting money into it. But when you're doing a conversion, when you're moving money out of your IRA, into a Roth IRA, when you're paying taxes on that money now and putting that money into a Roth IRA, the IRS says, we don't care how much money you make and we don't care how much you convert, 
just as long as you pay the taxes. So if you are a high earner, this is a great strategy to get money that's pre-tax into tax free. Another benefit is you can take old 401ks, old IRAs, old SEPs, old SIMPLES, whatever you want, you can convert from pre-tax to post-tax just as long as you're paying taxes. Now let me give you a little tip. If you are over the age of 59 and a half and you have a current 401k, you can actually do withdrawals out of that 401k as a rollover into your IRA and then do a conversion to a Roth IRA. Now, make sure you talk to your CPA, your tax accountant, your financial advisor. You call me because you're only allowed one rollover in a 365 day period. So I don't want to get you taxable, but you can do it. The second five-year rule for Roth IRAs is on conversions. And this is where the most misinformation and most confusion comes from. If you have a Roth IRA that you have converted from an IRA to a Roth IRA, there is a five-year rule before you can use that Roth IRA for retirement income. Now, first of all, let's explain what a Roth conversion is. A Roth conversion is taking money from your IRA, your 401k, your 403b, and moving it into a Roth IRA. You pay the taxes on it the year that you move it, and that money now in your Roth IRA grows tax free. It can be invested the same way it was in your IRA or in your 401k, but now that it's moved into your Roth IRA, it grows tax free because you paid taxes on the amount that you moved in the year that you did the conversion. Now, like I said before, each Roth IRA conversion has its own specific five year rule and you need to make sure you follow it to the T or the IRS will penalize you if you don't follow it exactly. It's why you need to keep very, very detailed records of any Roth conversion, especially the year that you do the Roth IRA conversion. If you're moving money from IRA or 401k into one specific Roth IRA, you need to make sure you detail how much you do in that year and you keep up with the earnings. That's why I always recommend to my clients, if you're gonna do multiple Roth IRA conversions, I'm going to show you that on the board. I would convert those dollars into separate Roth IRAs so that you can keep up with those and you can understand when the five-year rule ends for each of those Roth IRA conversions. And then once the five-year rule is done or you're done doing all your conversions, then you can commingle all those funds, get back to just one single Roth IRA to be a little bit more organized within your investing accounts. Now, Keep in mind, on a Roth IRA conversion, you have to wait five years on all of the money, contributions and earnings. Remember, with a Roth IRA contribution, if you needed the money, you could pull the, the contribution out anytime you wanted. You just can't take the earnings. With a Roth IRA conversion, all the dollars have to wait five years. Let me show you an example. So let's say you've got $500,000 in an IRA and you're 55, and you wanna do a Roth IRA conversion. But you don't wanna do all $500,000 at once because you're gonna pay enormous taxes. So you wanna break it down over a five year period. I've done this countless times with clients so that we can get their IRA or their 401k tax free. But what we try to do is we look at what amount makes the most sense for their tax bracket because we don't want a bracket jump. We don't want to have them in the 10% bracket and they go into the 20% bracket because we're doing Roth IRA conversions or they're in the 20% bracket and we put them in the 30% bracket because we're doing Roth IRA conversions. So if you're 55 and you convert $100,000 of your IRA to Roth IRA, you can't touch the contribution, the conversion or the earnings of this Roth IRA until age 60. At 56, you convert another 100,000, you gotta wait to age 61. 57, you convert 100,000, you gotta wait to age 62. 
58, you convert 100,000, you got to wait to age 63. And at 59, you convert another 100,000, you've got to wait till age 64. So there's a five year rule for each specific conversion. And like I said before, once you get to age 64 and all of this has been converted and all the five year rules have fallen off, just combine those Roth IRAs to stay more organized in your retirement investments. But what you want to do as you're initially doing the conversions is have them separated so that you can easily know, hey, that money's got the five-year rule, it ends in 2028. That money's got the five-year rule, it ends in 2031 or whatever. So keep in mind, the five-year rule for a Roth IRA conversion is on each specific conversion. The strategy is take the position that is worth the least and move it into your Roth IRA. So in this example, we're going to take $10,000 worth of Walmart stock because that's what the position is down for the year and we're going to move that into our Roth IRA. Now you might own $100,000 worth of Walmart stock but it's down 10% for the year so you want to do a $10,000 conversion, you're going to take $10,000 worth of stock. You're not going to sell the stock and move the cash. You're going to move the stock in kind. In most custodians, Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard, they'll let you do this. You're going to move it in kind from your IRA to your Roth IRA. And why are you doing that? because the position is lower than it was a year ago, or it's lower than it was six months ago, or three months ago. And it's a position like Walmart that you believe is gonna do well long term. Walmart is probably still gonna be around 10, 20, 30 years from now, in some form or fashion. So we believe in the stock. So we move the stock into our Roth IRA, at a lower value than it was three, six, nine, 12 months ago. Now it's in there, it's tax free. And as it appreciates over time, because it's gonna do better, right? As years and months and days go by, now we've converted the stock at a lower stock price, but it's appreciating over time. Do you understand that? Isn't that a great strategy for your IRA to your Roth IRA? All right, the last mistake you could be making that could cost you thousands when moving IRA money to Roth IRA is not understanding IRMA taxes. Now, IRMA taxes only apply if you're over the age of 65. And what IRMA is designed to do is to charge you more on your Part B Medicare premium if your income reaches a certain level. So if you're over the age of 65 and you're on Medicare, you have a premium you pay for your Part B insurance. That's going to be your doctor visits and your blood work and things like that. Remember, Part A is your hospitalization. Part B is mainly your doctor visits. Well, your Part B premium right now in 2022 is $170.10. But if your income goes over a certain threshold, the IRS and Medicare says, we're going to charge you more for your Part B premium. And if you don't understand these brackets, you could be paying a lot of money for your Medicare that could cost you thousands. So let's look at this. If your income is between 91,000 and 114,000, your Part B premium goes to $238 per month. So from 170 to 238, what is that? That's like $68. That's a lot of money. From 114,000 to $142,000, your Part B premium goes to 340. That's double the 170. If your income in retirement is between 142,000 and 170,000, your Part B premium goes to $442. If it's between 170,000 and $500,000, 
your Part B premium goes to $544. And if your retirement income is above $500,000, your Part B premium will be $578. Now, normally this will last for 12 months until you file your next tax return, and then that will be readjusted by the Social Security Administration. But you need to understand what your Part B premium is going to be when you do a IRA to Roth IRA conversion. Many individuals and clients that I talk to want to wait until retirement to do their IRA to Roth IRA conversions because they believe that's going to put them in a lower tax bracket when doing that. But if they're over the age of 65, not only are you going to look at tax brackets, but you also need to understand your Part B premium costs. And we don't want that to go up any more than we want our taxes to go up. So understanding where you fall in your income tax bracket and in your IRMA tax bracket is so very important when doing an IRA to Roth IRA conversion. All right. Well first mistake that you need to look for if you're doing a Roth IRA conversion is paying the taxes on that conversion out of your IRA. Now let me explain what an IRA to a Roth IRA conversion is first and then we'll talk through that first mistake. Basically an IRA to a Roth IRA conversion is moving money from your IRA to your Roth IRA whether that's a dollar or a million dollars. When you do that, it becomes taxable income. Now, there's no penalty on moving money from your IRA to your Roth IRA. You only get penalized when you take money out of your IRA or your Roth IRA if you're under the age of 59 and a half. So you can do a Roth IRA conversion at 20 years old or at 90 years old. But the mistake that I see when clients do an IRA to a Roth IRA conversion is they use their IRA dollars to pay the taxes on the Roth IRA conversion. And I especially see this on young people, individuals who are under the age of 59 and a half. Let me give you an easy example. Let's say we have a 40 year old investor and he wants to do a $10,000 Roth IRA conversion. So he's going to move $10,000 from his IRA to his Roth IRA. He's in the 20% tax bracket. Okay. So 20% of $10,000 is $2,000 in taxes. Now let's say this 40 year old says, I don't have an extra $2,000 in savings. What I'll do is I'll take the tax money out of my IRA. So if he does that, essentially, he's taken $12,000 out of his IRA. So now, instead of just being taxed on $10,000 coming out of his IRA to his Roth IRA, now he's taxed on $12,000, 10,000 of which went into his IRA for investments for his retirement, 2000 of which went to the IRS. He basically lost that money. So all that hard-earned IRA money that you've been contributing and investing and growing, you just took that off the table and sent it to the IRS. Well, he's also under the age of 40, or he's under the age of 59 and a half. He's 40 years old. So when he took this money out of his IRA, he had to pay a 10% penalty. So not only did he owe $2,000 in taxes on the $10,000, but he actually owed another $200 in a penalty plus his entire taxable income is not $10,000, it's $12,000. So it's $2,400 in taxes plus a $200 penalty. So what's that? $2,600 is his total tax burden. So instead of his total tax burden being $200 or $2,000, it's now $2,600, an extra $600 because he used his IRA to pay the taxes and he lost $2,600 forever because it went to the IRS. 
So when you're doing an IRA to a Roth IRA conversion, please make sure you have the cash on hand, whether in a bank account or in a taxable brokerage account that you can use to pay the taxes on your IRA to Roth IRA conversion, especially if you're under the age of 59 and a half, do not use your IRA to pay your Roth IRA taxes. All right, the next mistake that I see when doing a IRA to Roth IRA conversion is you don't understand your tax bracket and not understanding your tax bracket, whether before retirement or in retirement, could cost you thousands of retirement dollars, especially when you're doing an IRA to Roth IRA conversion. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you've been paying taxes long enough or listening to the news, you understand that our tax code is made of brackets. And depending on how much income you make, will determine the tax bracket that you fall into. Whether that's the 10% tax bracket, whether that's the 20, 22, or 38% tax bracket. And these tax codes are adjusted based on presidents and legislations, and they will change between now and the next 30 years. And you really want to understand what tax bracket you are in now before you do an IRA to Roth IRA conversion, and you want to understand what tax bracket you will be in when you do the IRA to Roth IRA conversion. Let me give you an example. So same individual, we have a 40 year old and let's say he's in the 22% tax bracket and his income for the year is $80,000. That's how much an income he's going to make. So no bonuses. We're just going to say $80,000 is his salary. So that puts him in the 22% tax bracket. And let's assume this individual says, Hey, I want to do a $10,000 IRA to Roth IRA conversion. So he does a $10,000 Roth IRA conversion. Well, that means he's going to have $90,000 in taxable income. Right? 80 plus 10 is 90. So he's going to have $90,000 in taxable income. Well, at $80,000, he was in the 22% tax bracket. Now, let me pull out my calculator real quick. $80,000, multiply that by 22%, that's a $17,000 tax burden. Okay, so here, just use round numbers, a $17,000 tax burden. Well, now, his $80,000, we've added in a $10,000 conversion, that gives him $90,000 in taxable income. You know what bracket that puts him in? That puts him in the 24% tax bracket. And you might say, hey, Drew, that's not a big deal. That's only 2%. Well, $90,000, 24%, that's 21K. 21 minus 17, that's an extra $4,000 in taxes. Remember I said that these mistakes could cost you thousands? This is what I'm talking about, not understanding your tax bracket. Now keep in mind, when you do your taxes, there's going to be deductions, there's going to be credits. We have a progressive tax code, so not all your income is going to be taxed at the highest bracket, but you really want to understand how much in this Roth IRA conversion, am I going to pay in taxes and what bracket is that going to put me in? In this guy's scenario, $80,000 to $90,000 at $89,000, that's where the cutoff is for the 22% uh, bracket. So over $89,000 puts him in the 24% tax bracket. So if he would have understood that, instead of doing a $10,000 conversion, Maybe he does a $9,000 conversion and he stays in the 22% bracket. Now, let's say he's already at $90,000 in salary. Well, now we've got from $89,000 all the way up to, I think it's $137,000. So you've got a lot more running room in that next bracket. You just want to understand where you 
are. Now I do this for all of my clients when we run a Your Financial EKG. It's our full service financial plan to make sure that you're going to get to retirement, you're going to get through retirement, and we're going to protect your ability to stay in retirement. We want to look at your taxes. How much in taxes are you going to pay now and how much are you going to pay in retirement and what's it going to do to you when you do those Roth IRA conversions. More details are in the description of this video.